point, you've heard the budget numbers. We have a starting point somewhere north of 6% or around 6% this year for the deficit, and we're correcting to 5% in the plan next year. I think the main point to make here is that the way this is structured is that it's really a sprinkle. It's a lot of measures. Every measure brings in a little bit. So there is the hope that by doing that and by going more into perhaps the upper income groups, into the particularly profitable companies, and with the promise to do that temporarily, perhaps you avoid a kind of typical strong effect on growth of these measures because they are each individually relatively small. So that's the way in which I think this government is trying to hope to correct for uh, the large deficit that has been building up um, very gradually and deliver some correction without necessarily harming the growth element to it and that I think is the crucial part that we're facing. Overall, um, yeah, France has had a lot of slippage and I think that was the surprise of this year. If you look back at a year ago, the plan for 2024 was to have a budget of 4.4%. We end up at 6% and I think that's a bit of a pickle we are in at the moment. There have been revenue losses, so you mentioned spending, but actually if you look at the details of the French public finances, it's not been the spending that's surprised to the upside. It's been revenue flows that have been lower than expected. And that created more than one and a half percentage points of slippage over the last year uh, for 2023 and 2024 combined. So we're now trying to fix something where we can't really explain why. Because we don't actually have had negative growth surprises. Perhaps composition wasn't good, but we had less revenues than expected, unusually low revenues for the kind of growth, uh, growth outcome we had. And now we're trying to fix it. So this is an attempt. I think it is given that you need to signal some kind of adjustment, perhaps the one way to do it, to try to really to spread it out over as many measures as you can in order to avoid to have one particular part of the economy that is taking some economic growth hit because that's, uh, I think, still the primary element you need to preserve in any kind of debt, debt ratio trajectory. It's your denominator, it's the GDP. And, and that has been one of the key questions, right? That was the, the philosophy of the Macron was cutting down taxes for mm. companies, for households to make the economy more dynamic, right. to make people spend, etc. And a lot of people are scratching their heads of what that hasn't worked. What well, scarce have come, the taxes have come down, mm. there's less tax revenue coming in, but yet that, that kick off of the economy hasn't happened. I wouldn't say it hasn't happened. If you look at France in comparison to, for instance, neighboring Germany, we've had cumulative growth of 3.5% or so since 2020, uh, since 2019, and Germany you had zero. Unlike in some of the periphery countries, we didn't have NGU, which didn't come out of the national public finances, but was pound finance, pound finance by euro. And then let's not forget that we've had very big shocks in the euro area economy. Of course, the pandemic was a shared one, but the way the energy crisis has hit us was very peculiar to Europe. So I think all of that you need to take into account in econ economics when you talk about the alternative scenario, the counterfactual, which we don't know. Uh, had we had none of these shocks, perhaps things would have worked out a lot better. But yes, the, the question on what happened, especially in 2023 and 2024 with fiscal revenues, that's the one that remains unanswered. And that's arguably the one that we would have to need answered to really find a fix to the problem.